tell me about today's tell me what today means to you today in general not just specifically here but i mean what is what is today to you well it's a it's a big day i'm all across canada but um unfortunately the the province has not recognized it as a national holiday not yet they're trying to balance things out but i think it's great to see the participation of the, the towns like Coburg and I think all across Ontario there's participation by all the municipalities and um, these orange t-shirts it, it just recognizes the support you know a lot of the stores in um, Alderville First Nation have been sold out and the proceeds from those shirts go to the residential survivor fund so it's um I, my wife jane has her own little store and she completely sold out of everything so it's just awesome just to see all the support people coming out for today such as this unveiling so now what do you think talk, talk a little bit about the crosswalk people people say you know it's great but people say also more needs to be done oh that's right it's uh it's a like a symbol um seven feathers um but you know uh, i don't want to say too much on the the crosswalk, but I remember the elders in uh, Rama First Station, they, you know, when the, the casino first opened up down that long corridor, they had the seven grandfather teachings in the carpet. So a lot of the elders um, said, well, we shouldn't be walking on it. So, but this is a symbol that recognizes the solidarity of First Nations. So, you know, I, I think it's a good gesture anyway, so. Nice to see all the people here and yeah. more, obviously, it hasn't started yet, but more people keep coming. Yeah. You know, I guess the main thing, and I've said this in many stories I do, it's nice, do you feel like you're not alone now? Now, I should say now, yeah. because maybe years ago, maybe uh, Indigenous people did think they were alone. So is this helping not only residential schools, but I mean, uh, everyone? Well, I think it is, and it, every, it gives everyone a, awareness, you know. And I think more has to be done with the, um, there's 94 recommendations, and this is just all our, all part of it, right? And, um, you know, even the curriculum in schools, it has to be recognized. I mentioned yesterday, I was on the announcement um, that Minister Lissy did, and the comment I, I made, well, if there's a curriculum on residential schools, First Nations and the survivors have to take part in that whole process if it's coming into our classrooms. So our children will know the whole story by the survivors themselves. So so that's some actually good work that the province is doing on that too. So we're starting. We're starting, yes. Yeah, no, this will be a fantastic day, Adam, but uh, you weren't part of the organizing on this? No, um, I know that a lot of people did reach out on social media asking if the town could do something, and then Councillor Beatty sent an email on behalf of both of us to Ashley and the CEO. Oh, actually, to put this together. Yeah, and... Dave, what do you uh, what do you see here? Well, I see uh, something I've never seen before. That's for sure. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of commitment to uh, a new uh, uh, sort of chapter in our history, and uh, I'm really encouraged by the way the municipalities are stepping up and really showing their uh, um, their uh, solidarity with us. I'm really really encouraged by that. It's a start. Yeah, it is a start. It's a good start here. This is a very good start today. Very good start. I'm really pleased. Are you surprised to see this amount, or is the message? Is the, I think the message is, but you tell me, is the message getting across about uh, the suffering that took place? The, the message to me today, the message is, has got out loud and clear. The message has got out loud and clear, and um, I'm really uh, encouraged to see that. 
What about what the town's doing here today? Obviously, we're here for the Indigenous Crosswalk unveiling. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, well, it's, you know, uh, I'm in, uh, i got to commend the, uh, the mayor and council here for taking the step that they've taken and uh, and, uh, and and just by the, the public uh, show here is really uh, encouraging. Last question. In one year, um, you can see the sea of change, I guess, just... You can see the sea of change and just maybe wait till the clock's done 10 more times because it's going to start soon. <laughs> but just if you can't, I guess speak nice loud, but if you can't, you can see the sea of change throughout the country or can you? Um, I can. I, uh, um, I see it. Uh, I think I'm going to see it at the local municipal level. I just came from Brighton and I was uh, involved in a, a smaller event there. And then I'm heading up to uh, speak to the t uh, employees of Hamilton Township. So at the municipal level, I'm seeing really encouraging movement. And I, I, I feel really good about that. Provincial? Provincial? Well, they got a ways to go. That's all I'll say. I did meet the MPP, uh, David Pacini, and I, we get along well. But uh, I think that uh, the province has a long way to go. No doubt. Uh, Mr. Beaver, Red Beaver, perfect. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, I'm sitting here, and um, I just uh, I'd like to see it. Uh, I'd like to see the provinces get behind this, too. Provincial level. Like, come on, let's, let's get on here. Right We're talking about the over a century ago. Yeah, come on, this time. This time. Great. Good. Come on. You got it. You got it. <laughs> respect for when our elders are speaking that please everyone who can do so please move your phones to silent so that we do not interrupt the important words they have to share with us today in partnership with alderville first nation it is my distinct honor to welcome each and every one of you to today's official unveiling of our truth and reconciliation we acknowledge that these treaties have not always been honored and often they've been broken we also acknowledge that we are all a part of building good relations together. We are all treaty people. Please let us move together forward with kindness and respect. Today, I continue to reflect on the harm of the Canadian residential school system and I continue to think deeply about my role as an educator in ensuring that every child matters. I chose this poem because it was written and recited for all the principals and senior managers in the Kawartha Pine Ridge District School Board to start our school year leading in a good way. Just as every plant has a spirit, so does every child. As a way to move forward, we need to give our attention and to learn as much as we can about every child in our schools and communities so that every child can grow and so that we can grow with them. Today is a seed. Every plant has a spirit. Look into any seed beyond its size or shape or texture. Hold this beginning in your hand, a whole seed and a whole body enter into relationship. Notice soil at your feet, layers of life, each particle a new story. Sand and clay, sun and rain, our mother earth and her medicines show a way to build belonging. Give your full attention to the stem, the personality of each leaf and bloom. Remember its name. Listen to its lessons. Appreciate this time and acknowledge this place. It's up to you to learn. Know every plant 
has a spirit, ancestral roots, a history, and a future. Outside what you can see, connected to everything, growing together. Marcy. For your time, wisdom, advice, and for your support. And with that, I will ask Mayor John Henderson and Chief Dave Mowat to please join us at the podium. Pleasure to be here. Thank you, Mary. Uh, it's a uh, very uh, heartwarming and uh, also uh, actually quite uh, taken back by the people I'm seeing here today. This is amazing turnout, and I commend Colbert and uh, the mayor and council for um, engaging in this uh, important day and engaging in this important. A history around the residential school. So, uh, once again, thank you, Mayor and and, uh, and Coburn. Very, very encouraging. And uh, and all I can say is uh, uh, thank you very much. I uh, I want to say a, a few words here, um, if that's okay. Um, I sent this message out earlier to our staff and members of Alderville, but I'd like to. Uh, uh, reiterate that message uh, today here on Truth and Reconciliation Day, September 30th. I hope that this message reaches the public at large because of the breadth of this historical issue and its past and present day impacts on Canada as a whole. As many of you have become familiar with the history of the residential school system that operated in Canada for over 100 years, beginning in the 1880s, in general, this is a part of Canadian history that was never known or understood by the general public. Since the findings at the former Kamloops Residential School and the reporting of such on May 28th of this year, the general public has become much more engaged in trying to learn more. Understanding this history is not a simple process of reading stories in the media, for the media's attention on such matters comes and goes. Understanding this chapter of Canadian history it takes a concerted effort by individuals and institutions. It takes an open mind and it requires the willingness and the acceptance of the general public to understand that it was the rule of law that made it legal to impose this system upon the heads of First Nations people. While the Dominion and federal governments of Canada sponsored this system of harsh assimilation, it had failed to live up to the original promises that underlie the relationship between the British Imperial government from which Canada was created and the respective First Nations who allied themselves to it in 1764. Original Wampum Belt said, they spoke, they continue to speak to all of us about the relationships that helped to create Canada. Let us never repeat such atrocities that were committed in the residential school system of this country, but instead focus on the... And often I'm asked, what do the white feathers represent? They represent love, respect, courage, honesty, humility, truth, and maybe the word reconciliation and wisdom. I like to say collectively, if we can begin a sea or an ocean of orange, which we have today in the town of Coburg, we will build a united bridge and i know our council has been working extremely diligently with staff to build a bridge with Alderville first nations and in fact all indigenous communities we have a shirt today and everybody has the same message every child matters these are words but I encourage all of us to put the words into action because without action, they're just words. So Chief, 
honor guest, Chief Mullet. I get to call Stephen, who will speak to you this afternoon, and I'm so excited to hear him speak. He gave me the pleasure of calling him Stephen Cash with a K, and I'm honored to do so. And I very much thank the honored guests from Alderville who came here in particular to bless this site today with a smudging ceremony. And in case you didn't notice, they were walking through the crowd to create you within a circle. Because you know, in indigenous learning, everything is interrelated. Everything is for Mother Earth, which we're all here to celebrate. I have to tell you, this is probably one of the most important days in my term. So thank you. Thank you to the town of Coburg, Elder Pash, and Chief Moet. Today is National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, also Orange Shirt Day, a day we gather to honor, reflect, and remember residential school survivors, their families, and children who were taken tragically from their families. As we work together to support meaningful reconciliation and strengthen our relationships with Indigenous peoples, we must continue to educate ourselves on our own nation's history. I think today as I look around at a sea of orange shirts, I think to the story inspired by Phyllis Webster, the story of the orange shirt, a residential school survivor who at the age of six was gifted an orange shirt by her grandmother. That shirt was taken away from her in the residential school system and never seen again. The tragic discovery of the remains of children at the former residential schools are horrific and collectively serve to remind us all that we still have much, much more work to do. This is a painful scar on our nation's history, a scar that will never go away, but we can learn from the pain endured we can learn from it, indigenous friends, from indigenous peoples and our partners. It's long past time for all Ontarians, all Canadians, to acknowledge this dark stain on our nation's history and to take action. And as I think to the seven teachings mentioned today, I'd especially like to thank you, Chief Moet. I don't know if you remember when we first met in Newcastle when you spoke about your great-grandfather, Fred Simpson, I believe who stands today still an enduring legacy as the greatest ever Olympic athlete, athlete, indigenous athlete, and a marathon runner. So today, as all of us reflect on what we can do individually, on what we can do collectively, let us unite around the journey forward to create a better future. It won't be done in one day. It won't be done in one week. But if we use gatherings like today, and what an incredible gathering this is, to spread awareness and to open our minds, as Chief Moet said, to collectively pledge that together we will take this journey each and every day. Thank you for having me today. It's an honor to be here on behalf of the Ontario Legislature and the Government of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity, for your wisdom, for your willingness to teach us today, for your willingness to allow us to learn how to do better, and for joining us in the spirit of reconciliation. First of all, I'm from Fort George, and I was born inland in, uh, on a trap line. My father was a hunter. My, my brother was a hunter. Everybody in our family were hunting and gatherers. gatherers. And commemorate the children that never made it. I knew some of them. And the next year, I didn't know they were gone. Some of them were back at home. When the plane landed again in our community,
some mothers were anxiously waiting to see their children that never got off that right? they they didn't uh, arrive because they were either not here with us anymore or they were in hospital or something no but most of them that didn't make it were not with us anymore how do you reconcile truth to us it's the quality of being true and um, we, ha we have it today as a statutory holiday and which is very pleasant for me because a lot of my friends that I didn't I don't see anymore a lot of friends I made in high school, uh, both native and non-native, some who are still with us today. Say to you, let's remember those families, our friends. Imagine, imagine uh, a mother waiting for their child to get off the plane but they never got off that plane imagine the sorrows of the, the villages and remember how you got home every every day from school your family and imagine a mother standing at the bank anxiously waiting for their child to get off the plane but they, ne but they never got off let us put the seven teachings as they were presented here today on our and this, that symbolizes love, respect, courage, honesty, humility, truth, and wisdom. And show each other these seven teachings as the chief reminded us and also our guests have talked about. <coughs> and with that, I'd like to thank you all for having me here. And I'd like to thank the, uh, the chief of Alderville and the people of Alderville for taking me in as one of their own. Thank you very much.